Hey everybody, Jason again here with GDT Basics and the video question line. Today's topic is reliable datum features. And today's question is, could you please make a video about what is a testable datum? Uh, so let's just get right into it and talk about what's a testable datum, or in our case, a reliable datum. Uh, there's no technical terminology to identify this, and there's really no technical terminology or guidelines uh, in any of the standards to talk about what a testable or reliable datum is. But we'll show you what the issue is here and how to avoid the issues that do arise from datums that are not reliable. First, we see this example drawing here of an axle shaft, and we see that datum feature A is being identified as this cylindrical surface here, more than likely a bearing surface. We also have another bearing surface over here, and the part is rather long relative to the diameter of the bearing surface itself. There's going to be some issues that do arise here. And so let's take a look at what happens if we have this cylinder as datum feature A. Again, the axis of that cylinder is going to give us our datum axis. And let's say that the orientation of the smaller cylinder kind of just tapers down a little bit, right? It's not quite coaxial, right? So if the axis here is our datum axis, and this axis is the axis of our uh, smaller cylinder here, we can see we're going to have a little bit of run out issue. But by the time we get all the way out here on the second bearing surface, we'll see that the amount of run out that happens uh, if we were to spin along this axis right here, the amount of up and down radial movement on this diameter is going to be rather large, right? Um, and that might be something you truly care about in the design. And if that's the case, there's nothing wrong with dimensioning it this way. However, just know that this is a rather short axis to try and control run out uh, a rather large distance away. But I'll take a second to make sure and note that if that is how the part functions, and it's very important that when the part is put in its final assembly and, and it does truly rotate about the one axis and this amount of up and down run out will not allow this part to function and that is what you directly want to tolerance this is a perfectly fine datum structure but more often than not in parts like this when we see parts like this that are this long there are multiple bearing surfaces that create a single axis of rotation and if that's how the part functions and not necessarily relying only on this one surface and then run out to this surface and run out to this surface back to that axis if that's not truly how the part functions it probably functions something more like this where an axis of rotation is created by both of these bearing surfaces simultaneously uh, and so what we get to do is we get to create an axis through both of these features this cylinder might look like this and this cylinder might look like this they both have their own axes and they will not be coaxial there's no amount of manufacturing accuracy that'll keep these two coaxial um, but what we do get to create based on these two features is a single datum axis and again that's an envelope that closes around both of them simultaneously and the axis of that envelope so the combined effect of both of them give us our datum axis now when we look at this part and we rotate it about this axis even if this feature goes down at an angle here and this feature goes up at an angle here we can now check both of these uh, surfaces both of these cylinders to datum axis a dash b and we can check this one to a dash b as well and this is a much more reliable datum in fact it more closely aligns with the functional intent of the part so again avoiding unreliable datums looks a lot like following the functional intent of the part let's take a look at another example here it's just a simple sheet metal part uh, one bend with a hole in one of the flanges and the other flange is being controlled with profile uh, in other words, perpendicularity as well as location from this surface and this cylinder here. Uh, technically a cylinder, but a rather short cylinder since this is 16 gauge sheet metal. So since we've identified this cylinder, the short cylinder, as primary datum A, uh, that means we get a datum axis from datum feature A, right? And that axis is going to control both translations up and down and left and right as well as the rotation that the axis can control, uh, again, in this direction and in and out of the page, right? So two translations, two rotations as a primary datum. Uh, it's a lot of control for a primary datum, especially a rather shallow cylinder. 
Now, there's two things that are wrong with this. Uh, it's a short cylinder, so the amount of orientation error that can happen and still be a usable feature is quite a bit. But if we're saying that there's a lot of orientation error allowed here, that we want to make sure to control the orientation of everything else since it's primary to that. So if this axis goes up at an angle, what we're saying with this call out here, primary datum feature, we're going to control the orientation of this flange with respect to that cylinder. So that's issue number one. More than likely, that's not what you're interested in as a designer. Number two is this is a really short cylinder, and that is a very, very hard thing to physically inspect. Uh, to actually get an inspection of the cylinder, get points on that, or get some sort of manual gauge on that surface, it's so shallow that it's really hard to engage and get a true, repeatable, reliable axis from that cylinder. Anybody in the inspection world will know that is a very difficult thing to do. Uh, and so for that reason, it's not a prime candidate for being a primary datum uh, and then using this surface as a secondary datum, right? The secondary datum here will stop translation and that's it because the orientations that this surface could have controlled uh, are already being controlled by that axis being since it's primary. Um, so what a better alternative would be, and I would argue probably more closely aligns with the functional intent of the part, just like our previous example, is to use the much more reliable surface as a primary datum, right? We can take points on this surface and then we can orientate everything to that surface. And if there is any locating going on, then great, we can certainly do that. Um, but then we go ahead and identify the cylinder as a secondary datum. Now it loses some power and no longer can control rotation about that axis in and out of the page as well. Um, but what it does still get to do is control that translation up and down left and right. So we are controlling translations with the datum feature B, which gives us an axis. And again, as I mentioned, that axis is a rather short axis since it's only 16 gauge sheet metal, that axis gets really short. And if we picture a really short axis, that's essentially like a point. And if that axis is just really short, and if we can picture it as a simple point, we can picture that point right here. And combined with the power from datum A as a primary, so one translation, two rotations, we can combine the three controls from primary datum A with the two controls of translation from secondary datum B to fully constrain this surface right here. So simply using a point or a really short axis to represent datum B uh, is perfectly fine in this scenario. We don't care how deep it is because we're not trying to control orientations uh, from the uh, depth of the axis. So again, to answer the question, there's all sorts of uh, ratios and rules of thumbs out there for sizes of datum features uh, versus the features they're trying to control. Um, but I like to keep it much more simple than that. To answer the question is, uh, can you reasonably gauge the feature uh, with a functional gauge or a uh, digital CMM or something of, of that sort. If you can, then it can be used as a datum feature. If it's repeatable in your world, uh, great, even better yet. But more often than not, the conversations should center around from the designer down, is this feature a functional feature? That will usually guide you to a direction that's much more reliable. Because when we put this part in the final assembly, it likely needs to get put in the final assembly the same way every time. And that is using structural, reliable datum features. Now, there are certainly scenarios out there where a not reliable, smaller uh, cylinder, shallow cylinder, not stable feature is truly being used as a primary datum feature as far as the functional intent of the part goes. In that case, I still recommend uh, utilizing a much more stable surface first uh, and then choosing that uh, datum feature as a secondary datum or something that has lesser control as far as its orientation because the inspection process is going to in, uh, invoke a little bit more uh, unreliability, not accurate measurements to what the actual feature is doing uh, in the final assembly. So keep that in mind here. Hopefully that answers your question and thanks for tuning in. Our goal is to be your best source for GD&T information online. It's important to us that everyone involved in engineering and manufacturing have the chance to learn and better understand GD&T on your prints. We have many free resources to help you get started on your learning journey. Subscribe to our GD&T community using the link in the description below 
or visit our website. Test your knowledge with our GDNT and print reading quizzes, download helpful charts, and access articles written by our training experts.